I'm your um, MC this afternoon, and uh, delighted that we've got a, um, a real variety of different companies, um, different um, topics that we're going to be covering this afternoon. Um, and kicking off, um, first of all, um, we've got a, a lady called um, Paula, um, who is an expert at moderating. So any of you thinking about doing any moderating, please listen carefully, because she's really good. But she's actually a, um, a digital Web3 ballerina. And she's come all dressed in her outfit. If you haven't clicked on her LinkedIn website, then I suggest you do, because it's quite cool, because half the time it flips between um, her face and her avatar. So um, Paula, if you can bring your panel on, and they'll explain that she's going to be talking um, about the metaverse, um, fashion enters the metaverse. So I'll hand you over to Paula. Thank you. Testing. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. Uh, so our panel is going to be on fashion enters the metaverse, and my name is Paul Marie. So basically, I am committed to uniting fashion, sustainability, and technology. So my job is basically to understand what kind of Web3 protocols I can use in building out sustainable fashion supply chains. Because we all know in Web3 that our customers and our creators are all about stakeholdership. So with post-COVID and rapid digital transformation, a lot of the fashion brands and the retail brands are actually looking at which kind of Web3 protocols are going to A, add value, or B, solve a problem. So I'd like to introduce you to my panel tonight, um, or this afternoon. So we start off with yourself. Hi, hello. Thank you, Paula. And um, thank you, Zebby, for having us. Uh, I'm Victoire. I'm a Web3 fashion investor, advisor in different projects. I invested in projects such as The Fabricant, um, Carbon XYZ, uh, UNXD, etc. And um, I'm also a collector, a digital fashion collector, and uh, I enjoy this. And I uh, hope I will be able to uh, bring more light on the subject. Hi everyone, I'm Ashmi Sangvi. I'm the CEO and founder of Mad Global. We are an innovation-focused creative production agency. Uh, I started the agency back in 2009, coming from um, a career that kicked off in media and publishing at Condé Nast International, and then at the British Fashion Council and net At Mad Global, we work across a variety of different projects, uh, really at the intersection of fashion and technology. Uh, we're we, we do a lot of projects, IRL, URL as well. We just had an event during London Fashion Week, uh, which was an immersive event for digital fashion and art. Um, and I really believe in the space moving forward by communities coming together to have shared immersive experiences. Thanks. Got one. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, uh, my name is Robbie Cochran. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Chain Guardians and Cryptoverse. Uh, Chain Guardians being uh, one of the kind of earlier GameFi uh, projects or platforms which integrates uh, NFTs uh, and uh, uh, interoperability across different types of, um, you know, experiences, gamified experiences, um, driving value back to the users in different ways, including play and earn opportunities. Um, and Cryptoverse is um, a metaverse uh, infrastructure protocol, uh, essentially enabling um, content creators, uh, including consumers and uh, businesses, brands, rights owners, and, and so on, to build digital experiences uh, inside the metaverse. Um, and yeah, that's me. Hi, uh, my name's Justin Edwards. Um, I'm the CEO of uh, Verse Digital. So Verse Digital is a company that helps brands enter the metaverse space through consultancy, education in Web3, blockchain, metaverse, etc. Um, we're a team of 3D modelers and gameplay programmers, uh, predominantly from the games industry. Um, and we help a lot of brands enter the Web3 kind of metaverse space by holding their hand through the process and activating them into the virtual world. Um, my background is from the games industry, so I been building virtual worlds for many years. Um, started uh, on RuneScape, um, Avakin Life, and more recently I was previously the COO at Decentraland. Hi guys, my name is Marta. Uh, I run several uh, social media accounts under Martaverse, uh, mainly Twitter and YouTube. Um, I come from retail background, spent about 16 years of my life 
uh, working in shops. I fell in love at some point with cryptocurrency and I lived in a world of charts, mainly uh, lines, um, falling wedges. <laughs> uh, eventually, um, the whole world opened up for me. Uh, I realized crypto isn't just a uh, token uh, price going up or down. Learned a lot, met a lot of people, and decided to stay around and um, share my knowledge um, and basically use social media as a way and means of trying to spread the word what actually cryptocurrency is about. And actually, Marthy, that's great because, you know, Marthy is really dedicated to onboarding non-crypto natives um, because the crypto is quite scary and, you know, we're trying to bring people into the space. So it's really important that education is top of the agenda. So we're just going to move on. I'm going to talk to, uh, uh, let me see, Justin about Metaverse Fashion Week in Decentraland. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I know that happened uh, in March last year. Yeah, sure. So um, we launched the first ever Metaverse fashion show. Um, I think it was about February um, this year. We had about 50 brands from the fashion industry that entered that space. Um, it was headlined by Dolce & Gabbana, Tommy Hilfiger, Dumbas, um, many brands. Um, we created the virtual cat show. Uh, Dolce & Gabbana took advantage of that by actually creating models that were cats, um, wearing digital wearables that Dolce & Gabbana had personally uh, designed. So they designed 20 wearables. They were available to buy as NFTs in the marketplace. Um, so they were the first to sort of headline and, and kick that off. But we had, well, we had Q&A sessions. Tommy Hilfiger stood up and did a talk. Yes, it was absolutely fantastic. In fact, my students were logging in and they all downloaded their MetaMask and they got their 3D wearables. And so it was a very exciting time for us as well. And um, Ashumi, can you tell us a little bit about XOR, VR, working with brands, building these digital immersive experiences around 3D e-commerce, that kind of thing? Yeah, so we've been actually using immersive tech, uh, and that was our first entry point into how we got into the, um, the Web3 metaverse um, side of the projects that we do at Mad Global. Um, initially, we started really using augmented reality because, you know, I'm a big proponent of it. It's the easiest sort of access point. Of course, the filters across different social media channels already gives a very quick uh, um, ROI, so to speak, on the engagement um, and what you, what the brands can get out of it in return. But there's also a lot more um, developed experiences that we've built for fashion experiences uh, that we did prototypes for Montclair, for Pangaea, for JW Anderson uh, to showcase what photorealistic models could look like with 3D in 3D environments. And we have a prototype app that we built in 2020 um, to showcase some of these experiences, um, which, you know, I think with augmented reality and some of these immersive technologies, you really have to experience them firsthand. Because, you, you know, I mean, a lot of times we kind of talk about them, but unless you experience what that feels like on your own device, it's very hard to really imagine. Absolutely. Um, what, what that could be like. So I think for us, it's always been about sort of pushing the boundaries on photorealistic immersive content, um, but also something that's easily shareable, obviously going to be wearable, and then something that you could also shop from, so shoppable. Uh, so, you know, it's also kind of looking at what the brand wants to, to do and how these uh, experiences sit across the funnel from the stories that they're trying to tell. Yeah, and if you go back to metaverses, I mean, historically, to be fair, it's really about 3D e-commerce, right? So, you know, when we're building out these metaverse platforms, you know, the first thing you have to start off with is pretty much digital twinning and 3D wearables. Now, I know, Vicky, you're a fan of collecting NFTs and 3D wearables. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yes, one thing you, you mentioned that to me that's, that's really true, it's us to be wearable. And the thing is, um, with uh, digital fashion today, is you have different use case because you have, uh, or you will dress your avatar on the central end. You have, uh, or you will just pump yourself on a Zoom call or just like uh, with a filter, with augmented reality. And then you have the amazing NFT that you can buy and ask the designer to render for your picture. So uh, regarding of these different use cases, you will not wear it the same way. You will not enjoy the same way. You will collect it in a different way. Um, personally, I love all these different 
items for what they are bringing, but I think the the really the challenge for digital fashion is being able to be cross-platform and have the best utility in uh, your like digital fashion closet. So that that's a good challenge. Absolutely, because I suppose in fashion retail supply chain we use NFTs historically for provenance, um, ownership, and authenticity. And we've noticed quite recently now with NFTs, 3D wearables and shopping for avatars, virtual try-ons. These are all helping in the consumer buyer behavior process of retail. Um, Robbie, can you tell us a little bit about um, char uh, gain, uh, sorry, your uh, cryptoverse and uh, interoperability around 3D wearables on different metaverses? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, for those of you who don't know what interoperability means, what, what we're talking about here is the ability to use, for example, an asset, i.e. in this case, quite often NFTs, uh, and for that to have kind of use case, not just in like one platform, but in several platforms. Um, and I think that that is the ultimate value proposition for um, you know owners of NFTs is the ability to use those assets interoperably across different uh, platforms. So say for example, if you were to buy a wearable NFT in Decentraland, then you would be able to also use that wearable NFT in um, let's say Sandbox, which is a, another popular metaverse platform, or Cryptoverse as being a, a, a much newer one. So we're not quite all, at the same kind of like product level as them two yet. But um, the main challenges come right down to the fact that there are different programming languages um, and the way that the avatars are programmed um, often dictates how you can basically apply those avatars, uh, those wearables to the avatars. Uh, and these are the challenges with interoperability because if a platform creates a wearable and they sell that wearable, let's say um, Decentraland does so, why would Sandbox have an incentive to then make that wearable um, you know, activate onto their avatars. Um, there's quite a significant amount of development work that goes into that. So there's a little bit of kind of uh, insight there into say some of the industry challenges to realize maybe what the ultimate use cases are for digital wearables and NFTs from a consumer level. Of course, it's the, uh, you know, it's the good thing to do because you're driving the value back to the NFT owners, which is ultimately what Web3 should be about and what NFT should be about. Um, so we're, we are approaching it in Cryptoverse where we are trying to make uh, avatars scalable in such a way that it will enable users who own NFTs from these different platforms to also utilize them on Cryptoverse. Um, how that is being done is a much longer kind of technical piece, but um, it's, I think ultimately that, that is what um, all decentralized metaverse platforms should really be striving towards as the end goal. And that's quite interesting, actually, because um, I also buy 3D wearable NFTs and my students would say, oh, miss, why are you buying more 3D wearable NFTs? And I'm like, well, I want to use them as collateral to get a loan to buy a second home. So we know DeFi, and I often, I don't know if you're familiar with Sex in the City, Carrie Bradshaw, she often said, I like to see my money where I can see it hanging in my closet. Well, I've actually changed that to my virtual closet, because if you think about it, 3D wearable NFTs are buyable, sellable, tradable assets. So, you know, as we move forward in the fashion industry, you know, getting our customers to buy these 3D wearables, they do have currency and they can be used as collateral. Maybe Robert and Justin, can you go on to tell us a little bit about DeFi or are you familiar with the buy, the, you know, these 3D wearables and how they're bought and sold? Um, maybe you can familiarize us with that process. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, I mean, I think that's what's great about the, the metaverse space is that it's an opportunity for anyone and everyone to get involved, whether you're a big company or you're just an independent 3D artist. You know, you can make, a, you can make money from developing your own assets uh, and selling them as NFTs in the marketplace. Um, I think really, that's a really cool thing. And I think there's a great opportunity for creators as well. I mean, you know, we know that NFTs offer new monetization and IP opportunities for creators because in Web3, it's about stakeholdership. And stakeholders are customers, they're academics, they're creatives. They're all working together to build, a, you know, a sustainable fashion supply chain and um, company. Speaking of other Web3 protocols, I'm very interested in DAOs at the moment as well. So maybe Vicky, can you tell us a little bit about DAOs and I'll tell you my idea for my use case. All right, okay. Um, so I'm also part of Red DAO. So DAOs are decentralized um, autonomous organization. It's actually like if you were forming a, a club or a group of people that decided through um, a governance to 
are together. So in the case of Red DAO, we are like an investment DAO. So we, what we have decided as a DAO is to collect together uh, pieces or invest together in um, in projects. So we we just put everyone put a bit of money when when you enter, and then um, with the the pool of money the you, the DAO has, you uh, decide you vote if you want the DAO to buy this piece or these NFTs, or if you want to support this artist. Um, even sometimes we also sponsor events. We did an amazing um, event in the. Venice, uh, Vienna last year. It was an amazing ex big exhibition of digital fashion. And now, things progressing, we're also investing in projects, in, in uh, digital fashion startups, entrepreneurs. So we started really as um, collectors, like digital fashion NFT collectors. But now we are scaling with the industry of digital fashion. And we decide as a group with a common wallet to um, invest in different projects or, or collectibles. And I think the power to do that is because when you have a larger wallet, you can do bigger things. And um, the union of um, being together give us more strength to being able to have a um, bigger power um, to support the artists we, we like. And also that's a way for us to also push the industry to grow. I absolutely think Zara supply chain would benefit greatly from a DAO. I definitely think in the future, okay, we're Zara customers, but we're going to be Zara stakeholders and we'll be voting for online or on-demand fashion supply chains via consensus mechanisms. So I think out of all the Web3 protocols, my fave, the most disruptive one um, and the most democratic one would probably be DAOs. How do you guys feel? What, what would be your favorite Web3 protocol that fashion brands are using? Ashumi. I actually agree. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I love what Red Dow are doing. I've been kind of um, supporting them. I know a lot of the other investors who are also part of Red. Uh, you, they also supported um, Proof of People, which was another event that we were partners with over the summer after NFT NYC. Um, and it is important to push the space forward by collectively investing in projects that um, also have resonance with communities. So I think definitely I would say DAOs as well. Mm -hmm. um, how about yourself, Marthia? What, which, um, what's your most favorite Web3 protocol that used by fashion brands? At the minute, uh, it has to be... Um... NFTs? Yeah. Yeah, because you're a big... And you also like to collect NFTs. Which, which brands do you think is doing the best in NFT collections? What would be your, your favorite? <laughs> Where to start? <laughs> um... Fashion, definitely, uh, I am a big supporter of that project anyway, and anybody um, that isn't aware of it, um, Vulcan Forged, those guys have built amazing. Uh, they only recently have um, uh, partnered up with DKNY. And I, I actually love the fact that they, it was their first brand they partnered with because I love their clothes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I think it just obviously opens a lot of doors um, and just being, you know, um, one of the first brands to get there and dabble in metaverse and NFTs, um, it is going to open a lot more uh, opportunities and fashion uh, industry is going to finally start seeing the opportunities that come with NFTs and metaverse. Fantastic. Robbie, gamification. Um, if I rock up in, you know, Chain Guardians or on another blockchain game, will I get paid, you know, to make cute fashion outfits? And can you tell me about your plans for fashion and gamification? Yeah. Um, so I think one of the, you know, biggest draws for um, fashion into the metaverse is the ability to also uh, add use case and utility. Because I think one of the major kind of troubles or challenges for many projects that launch NFTs. We've all seen, or you've probably all seen the PFP projects where 10,000 of these are following, you know, what happened with Bored Ape, um, many of which are lacking like fundamental utility. So the challenge is that with, with fashion, obviously a lot of the kind of uh, value is, is intrinsic to how I feel when I am wearing this like virtual wearable. Um, but there's opportunities there as well uh, to tie it to like gamification, uh, as well. So, for example, in Cryptoverse, one of the things that we're looking to do is it's okay, you may have like, I'm just spitballing brands here, Nike trainers, great, they look awesome and we're super excited about that. But what else can they bring? Well, okay, if you have these Nike 
futuristic trainers inside the metaverse, maybe I can have a plus 10% walk speed in the metaverse as well. Or maybe they can change into, uh, you know, like boosters and you're like hovering on the ground. So there's kind of an infinite amount of opportunity in the gamification of the, the fashion brands that are coming into the metaverse because ultimately it's like, you know, the imagination is the limit. Excellent. Justin, what would be your favorite, which, which brand do you think is, 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 has the most clout in the metaverse at the moment or in Web3? Who's like the most visible traditional fashion brand, do you think, at the moment? I think the fabricant are doing a lot of great stuff in the metaverse space at the moment, to be honest. Um, just saw the other day that they've done a release in Decentraland with uh, women of Web3. Um, they have their fashion show at the moment running in the space. I think... I think the people in the fashion industry that are innovating the most in this space are the ones that are getting the more sort of brand awareness out of the activations because it's reaching the press. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think like, like what you were saying, the, the excitement there for me is also the future of AI within the fashion industry. You know, um, I saw uh, this week someone r launched a prototype which is basically an AI driven clothing outfit which is a pair of shoes and it um, it basically those. detects where where you're going in the metaverse so if you're going into a nightclub your shoes would turn into you know kind of a smart pair or if you're going into you know a planetary sci-fi experience it could turn into moon boots you know and I think that kind of innovative exciting updates within the fashion industry is yeah, is, is uh, it's, it's a great like. example, I suppose, of the Fabricant is a digitally native fashion brand or crypto brand, and then World of Women is an NFT collection, and then, you know, them coming together to create new products and services. And then, of course, you know, when Nike bought over Artifact, you know, Nike, yeah, they make, you know, runners and apparel, but actually they're kind of more like a tech company. I mean, I think they're doing amazing um, things in the space. Ashumi and uh, Vicky, would you like to add to that? Like, what brands do you think have the most clout in the metaverse and Web3 at the moment? Um, sorry. <laughs> I have always actually loved what Gucci have done um, because they're very, I, mean, I, I think it's always, I mean, obviously historically with fashion brands and the ones that have um, always done very well have been ones that have the strongest narrative and storytelling. Uh, and I, I love their N N10 KTF project. Um, I love what they did with Gucci Vault. So they've always been the ones that have stuck out to me the most. Yes, I do agree with Ashumi, but also I think that um, as a collector, I do prefer what uh, digital um, native uh, designer are doing, like Steffi Fung or Morchen. Um, there is lots of really talented designers that are their own. But if I should say about like a project, obviously Artifact is a really good one because they understood what uh, that is about community. And they didn't do only things with Nike. In that. So not they are with Nike, but they did like an amazing lunch with uh, Ferocious last year. That was like brilliant. Otherwise, I think what's doing the Prada group uh, with the Aura blockchain is also, no, also a good example of another use case of blockchain for fashion with uh, the transparency in the supply chain, the fact that you have... Uh, you can scan your, the clothes you're buying when you're buying like Miu Miu or anything from the product group. So there is different use case, different style, and lots of things that are going in a good direction. Yeah, so what we're basically saying is that fashion and retail love Web3. We're very excited about developing new use cases. Actually, I'm a lecturer as well, so I know when I go to class, my students always ask me, Miss, is that handbag original? Show us your NFT. Um, so we know that there's going to be lots of great use cases coming through with Web3. Just to finish up, anyone would like to add anything? What are the challenges that, you know, in Web3 at the moment or what opportunities? Anyone to add anything, maybe Justin? Um, yeah, I could add something to that. I think, I think the challenges with fashion entering the metaverse space in particular, or the same for any brand, is more, more around the sort of technical limitations of the current Web3 metaverses. And mm -hmm. so one of the things to be aware of when you're entering this space is that the performance is not what you'd expect or you, you, you'd be familiar with in the Web2 space. And so, you know, the community is forgiving of it because they're used to it, but new players coming into that space maybe aren't expecting to, for their machine to crash so much as, as it does. And, 
you, you used to need quite a big gaming rig to run the metaverse space, but you know now, you know, up, the, the technology in the space is moving so quickly. You know, downloadable clients are available, which means now it runs on a middleware kind of i5. Um, so I think I think that's something to be aware of. For sure. Yeah, the infrastructure is changing, hardware and software is becoming more intelligent and more um, um, progressive. And yeah, I definitely think within the next five to ten years, you know, everybody's going to be own their own digital assets and, you know, participate in DeFi and participate in building these new decentralized communities around fashion supply chains. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you so much, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.